This video covers STAT 454, Chapter 4, Section 8, Unbounded Solutions and the Direction of Unboundedness. Recall that in Chapter 3, we were discussing the solution types to LPs, and one of the solution types was the unbounded LP. So we visualize that by looking at the feasible region of the LP and noticing not that it is an unbounded region, but as I take the isocline and move it upwards, increasing the values of the objective function, it still stays inside that feasible region. The isocline will always stay inside the feasible region, yielding higher values of the objective function no matter how high it goes. Uh, this is the thing that classifies the LP as an unbounded LP. Uh, now I want to show you what you can do to recognize the unbounded LP from the simplex tableau. Here's tableau number 21 in the section 4.8. Let's pretend that we were trying to solve this maximization problem. So we would choose the most negative coefficient in row zero. And that corresponds to variable x3. After this, we'll perform the ratio test to see which row becomes the pivot row. Taking the ratios of coefficient to right-hand side, 20 over negative 6 and 5 over negative 1, we need these ratios to be positive to choose the smallest one, but unfortunately they're both negative, so neither one allows us to take a ratio according to the simplex method. When all, ro when all rows fail the ratio test for the entering variable, that's the sign that the LP is unbounded. So now, we know how to identify an unbounded LP, this property, when we perform the simplex method. The next question you might have is, okay, we know the LP is unbounded, how do we actually go about and generate unbounded values? So the current setup for this LP gives us z equals 100 as an objective function value. But if the LP is unbounded, I should be able to increase it. I should be able to make z equal 100, 200, 300, any value I want as long as I stay in the feasible region. How do I guarantee that I stay in the feasible region? The current battle plan is that we are trying to enter x3 into the basis because it is the value with the right coefficient in row zero, but it is currently a non-basic variable. So my goal is going to be increase x3. In other words, x3 is something that's allowed to change while the rest of these non-basic values remain zero. I'm going to write out the constraints and show you what these two assumptions do. What happens if I keep all of the non-basic variables equal to zero except x3, which is the one I'm trying to increase? Rewriting the results of that tableau, I have x2 minus 6x3 plus x4 plus 6s1 minus s2 equals 20, and I have x1 plus x2 minus x3 plus s1 equals 5. This is me rewriting those two constraint equations. Now notice, I have these three non-basic variables. That means they are going to remain zero, and I can cross them out of these equations. That creates two simplified equations. Negative 6x3 plus x4 equals 20, and x1 minus x3 equals 5. Now, x3 is the variable in this case. It's the 
variable whose value I am considering increasing. So I am going to solve both of these equations for x3. x4 equals 20 plus 6x3, and x1 equals 5 plus x3. What do these two equations say about the constraint situation? Consider these as slopes. If I increase x3 by 1, the slope of 6 says I should increase x4 by 6. The slope of 1 in the second constraint says I should increase x1 by 1. And finally, if I include the slope of the constraint of the objective function, I believe that slope was 9. This increases z by 9. All of the other variables aren't affected by 3, by x3, so the rest stay 0. This lets me create a slope vector for z, x1, x2, x3, x4, s1, and s2 that looks like how much is z changing with respect to x3? 9. How much is x1 changing? 1. x2 and is not. x3 is changing by 1. x4 is changing by 6. And these two S slack constraints, S slack variables, are not changing at all. This is the slope vector based on x3. This piece of information says increase x3 by 1, and all of the other variables change by the amount in the corresponding coefficient. So z increases by 9, x1 increases by 1, x4 increases by 6. So now that I have a slope, if I can include another point, I can write a linear equation that describes a direction of increase. Well, good news. Let's take a look at a feasible point. If you go into the textbook, You'll notice that the first tableau, I believe this was table uh, 20, I believe. Uh, feel free to double check that for me, students. If you look at the first tableau, you'll see that there's a feasible point, an initial point that looks like 100, 5, 0, 0, 20, 0, and 0. If I want to throw on the slope, I can multiply by the slope 9101600. And I can add on as many of these as I want. So let's call this a coefficient c. This is any non negative value. So if I wanted to increase the objective function and guarantee feasibility, I take this initial feasible point and start adding in multiples of this unboundedness slope. Quick demonstration on how something would actually apply here. Find a feasible point. with an objective value z equal to, let's say, 190. So I'm going to take this equation, that's a matrix equation, and I'm going to rewrite it in terms of its z component. The z component looks like 100 plus 9c. I want to make this equal 190, and I think we're all confident enough to say that this forces c to equal 10. 
now that I know c equals 10, I can use this on the uh, unbounded direction equation that I have to generate all of the other values. So for example, I have x1 as 5 plus c. I have x2 as 0 plus 0 c. I have x3 as 0 plus c. I have x4 as 0 plus 6c. And then I have s1 and s2 both as 0 plus 0c. Plugging in c equals 10 gives me x1 equals 15, uh, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 10, x4 equals 60, and s1 and s2 equal to 0. Notice these three values were the initial non-basic variables. They stayed non-basic variables, while x3 was the quantity that we were increasing, which caused x1 and x4 to increase as well. These three values as basic variables generate z equals 190 as an objective function value. This covers all of the content for chapter four, section eight, uh, unbounded LPs and the direction of unboundedness.